Okay, let's try to solve an even more complicated um, inequality. Keeping in mind that we're using the same steps, procedures, uh, thought processes uh, that we've done for, uh, for equations. So let's try this guy right here. 8 minus x all over 3 is greater than 2x plus 1 all over 5. Now we had an example like this when we were working with the equations from before. Um, the best thing to do since you've got these horrible fractions is to get rid of them. And I don't mean pretend they're not there and just cross them out. I mean you know better than that. Instead we want to find the least common denominator and get rid of these guys. Okay. So when you look here the least common denominator for 3 and 5 is what? Yeah, it's just 15. Now what I'm going to do with the 15 is I'm going to take both the left side and the right side and multiply them by 15. And if it helps you out, you can think about this as being 15 over 1. A lot of times that will help us simplify um, these fractions. Now by multiplying both sides times 15 over 1 will allow me to simplify, reduce these guys. So these guys reduce by a factor of 3. 3 goes in there once, and 3 goes into 15 five times. So I'm left with 5 times 8 minus x greater than. It's going to remain greater than because I multiplied by a positive number, so that didn't change the direction of the inequality. 5 and 15 have a common factor of 5. 5 goes in here once. 5 goes into 15 three times. If you really do have a common denominator, you should be able to reduce and simplify away the denominators that are already here. So that leaves me with a 3 times 2x plus 1. And now it's just a matter of using the distributive property and then combining like terms, you know, moving things from one side to the other with the addition property, and then we're going to be done. So let's go ahead and distribute. This gives me 40 minus 5x is greater than, distribute over here on the right side, that's 6x plus 3. Alright, well now it's just a matter of get your variables to one side, constants to the other. Now if it's me, I, I really like my coefficients to be positive, so I'm going to add the 5x to both sides of the inequality. So that's going to cancel. And you know what? While we're doing this, let's go ahead and move the constants to the left by subtracting 3 from both sides. We did stuff like this um, when we were solving inequality, uh, excuse me, we were solving equations where we went ahead and moved the variables and the constants in the same step. So now we have just 37 greater than 6x and 5x gives us 11x. And look, we're almost done. We just have to get rid of this coefficient. So we're going to divide both sides by 11. When we do that, we have that 37 elevenths is greater than x. Again, if you prefer to write the x first, it's pretty simple. write the x first. Notice how the inequality is pointing to the x. So it still has to point to the x. So that means that x is less than 37 over 11. Now I know this is not a pretty number. You can try to reduce this if you want to, um, but I'm okay with the way, it, the way it is right here. If you absolutely have to make this a mixed number, that's going to be 3 and 4 elevenths. So now we just need to turn this into a graph and then do the interval notation. So my number here is 37 elevenths. Is it going to be open or closed circle on 37 over 11? Well since there's no equal to part, it's just uh, here it's greater than, when we flip it around it's less than, it's going to be open. And since it says x is less than, that means we're going to be shading out to the left. 
just like that. So my interval notation coming from negative infinity to 37 over 11. Parentheses on the negative infinity, parentheses on 37 over 11 because it's open circle and we're not including that. So notice the steps that we took here. Get your least common denominator to clear out your fractions that you have here, clear out your, those denominators. You got a much simplified inequality to solve. Distribute, use the addition property, use the multiplication property, and then we flip this guy around to make it a little bit easier to read and graph. Okay, now let's try one more example here. I want to be ready for this one. This one's not going to be very nice. All right, so let's try this. 2x plus 7 minus x is greater than or equal to 10 plus x minus 5. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that we have here on each side of the inequality. So let's go ahead and combine like terms. On the left side, you see that we have a 2x minus x. So those guys will combine to give me an x, just a plain positive x. And just go ahead and bring down that positive 7. Now, we didn't do anything to both sides of the equation. We're just uh, combining like terms. On the right side, we have a positive 10 and a negative 5. Let me bring down the positive x first. And then, of course, 10 minus 5 is plus 5. Now, with this inequality, we'll want to get all of the variables to one side and all of the constants to the other side. Now, if we just initially start moving the variables from one side to the other, watch what happens. I want to move my x's from the right to the left. So here, x minus x gives me 0, so those cancel. And, oh no, the same thing happens over here. These guys cancel too. Now look what I have. I have that 7 is greater than or equal to 5. Now what we said before is that if all of your variables cancel, you have to look at the resulting statement to determine what your solution will be. If it's a false statement, when you're talking about things that are linear like this, a false statement means no solution. A true statement meant all real solutions. So let's look at what I have. Is 7 greater than or equal to 5? Well, yes, this is definitely a true statement. Since this is a true statement, that means that all real numbers will be solutions to this original inequality. That means no matter what number you plug in, any number you think of, fraction, decimal, uh, it doesn't matter. Any real number you think of is going to make this original inequality true. Because essentially it breaks down to something like this. 7 is greater than or equal to 5. Now some of you may say, Mr. Craig, I'm going to go ahead and move all my constants to one side. You know what? What if you did that? What if you, i got to move my constants to the right. Yeah, you know what you get? 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2, which is still a true statement. It's still going to be a true statement. You're not going to be able to work around that, and it's going to mean all real numbers. Okay, now suppose, just suppose, go with me here for a second. Suppose that it wasn't greater than or equal to. Okay, just a little supposition here. So suppose that all of the variables had canceled, and you had this. You had 2 is greater than 5. Now, if you have that 2 is greater than 5, well, we know that this is a false statement. 2 is definitely not greater than 5. And that would tell me that I have no solution. It would tell me that I have no solution. So watch out for these whenever you're working these problems on the lab handouts.